can keep clapping, just keep clapping till I actually get to the mic. That would be lovely. Well, this is uh, going to be entertaining, I think. We, is this okay? Are we all right? I mean, just... You look like my type of audience, I've got to be honest. Um, predominantly old, most of you. Have we actually got anybody under the age of... I don't know, let's set the bar low to start with, shall we? Have we got anybody under the age of 40? I'm drawn to this table here. Let's drop it down a little bit lower. And I'm a little bit worried now, because have we got anybody under the age of, what, 13? All good. 14? We go up in increments. 15? 16? Any advantage of 17? Two 17-year-olds. What about you, young man, cause with, the, with your hood up? It's not that cold now. <laughs> There's a bloke over here with no hair. He hasn't got his hood up. Look. Are you, are you going to have your hoodie up all night? Yes, I don't blame you. Won't make you invisible. I can still see you down there. Um, so we've got the 17-year-olds. And then, just at the other end, who's over 60? Just by a show of your arthritic hands, just... Just two. Just the two of you. No, there's more than that. I'm 64, right? Let's just get that out there now. So if you feel old, just put your hand up. That's absolutely fine. Um, but this, is, this feels... I'm not sure whether this is a comedy gig or a saga out, and I've got to be honest. Um, have, have you all been to a comedy night before? No, never. OK, so what's going to happen is... Um, I'm your MC tonight. My name's Nick Hill. And I'm just going to chat to you for about 10, 15 minutes. And then we've got three acts on. So we'll have the first act, and then we'll have a break. And then uh, we'll have your middle act on a break, and then your headliner. And then that's it. That's all done. Is that, is that all right? Yeah. I mean, if it isn't, that's what's happening anyway, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, so, Wes, I, you know, as, as well as being a stand-up, um, and you won't know this, but I'm also, um, I'm also a psychic. Um, and I, I just get the feeling that in the room, I've, I've got my psychic animal being channeled through it, and, and, and it's telling me, football, have we got anybody associated? I've, I've, I've got the feeling there's somebody associated with, with football in the room, and I'm looking around now, and I can't see him. Um, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking of, uh, I've got, I've got everybody, I've got somebody, I've got the feeling somebody in the room is associated with football, and they're moving across the back, carrying drinks in their hand. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where it's coming from. My psychic animal is just challenging me through. And, and I've got the feeling the person associated with football was moaning earlier on in the bar about how cold it was at Harrow Hill today. Is that right? Because <laughs> you're not from these parts, are you, with your accent and your lovely tan? Where are you from, young man? No, you're not. No, 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 we're not having that. And now I'm going to make that faux pas that one of the Queen's women has made. Where are you from originally? Yeah. Where, where are you from? Originally, I'm from North Africa. Oh, are you? Okay. What, Morocco or somewhere like that? No, Libya. You, oh, Libya. Okay. And you now live in Blakeney? Why are you from Libya? Ooh, from Libya. Christ, I bet you were surprised. That's fantastic. And we've got some other people in who... Um, I loved it, because I was in the bar and somebody came in and ordered orange juice and lemonade, a pint of lemon and lime, and then asked, have you got any ice? As if they wouldn't have. Like, I mean, I know it's Lindy, but surely to God, you've got ice down here. You, do you have ice? You've got ice. Is that all right? Yeah. Not very often. Not very often. Oh! <laughs> So do they not have ice in the bar very often? They don't. Mark, you've got a complaint already. <laughs> Just out of interest, how often do you actually come to Lydney Town Hall? Not very often. Right, well, shut up then. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, so you only come here once every ten years, and last time they had no ice. Brilliant. Oh, that's great. Um, you, you, I'll, I'll tell you what, you should applaud yourselves from coming out tonight, because... Because you are the chosen people, aren't you, really? You are the chosen... 89,000 people live in the Forest of Dean. Ten yeah, 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 I've done my research. 10,000 live in Lydney. 
So that means at home tonight is 9,950 people. <laughs> and one of them's asleep. Yeah. So 50 are out. And I'm thinking, what are the rest doing? And I think, to be honest, probably 25% of those are probably wanting to watch Strictly, but they're missed out because that was on last night. 25% are probably watching football. 25% are probably having the takeaway. And the other 25% are probably out just doing criminal things, aren't they, really? Um, <laughs> And it's a good job this gig wasn't in Cinderford, isn't it? Because if we'd have been in Cinderford, fucking 100% would have been out doing criminal stuff. <laughs> and some the acts, the acts you're going to see tonight, they're not from round here. Like, because I'm from Gloucester, so I've got a little bit of local knowledge. And, and, and they phoned me and one said, Nick, what can you, uh, what can you tell us about Lydney? Is there anything interesting about it? Not no. <laughs> and I looked on Wikipedia. Do you know what it says about Lydney on Wikipedia? It's a small town in the Forest of Dean, and it's got a bypass. <laughs> that is it. That is it. Is there anything... I mean, obviously, this iconic venue, and this is... I mean, this is fantastic venue, isn't it? And, and the Beatles played here in 1962, so I'm a massive Beatles fan, and this is, this is an honour to, to be on this stage. So, um, but is there, is there anything else about Lydney that we want to discuss? And Drugs! <laughs> We'll come on to that in a minute. We will come on to that in a minute. And um, Sean, one of, you know, one of the first acts, he, we were just chatting out there, he said, oh, they're very progressive in the forest, aren't they? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I, I, came, I came down that A48 and I saw a sign which said the Dyke Hospital. I said, no, it's, it's, it's not the Dyke, mate. It's, it's, it's the Dilk. He said, and then a bit further on, I saw a sign which said, go ape. I went, and he said, well, I know they've got wild boars. He said, but don't fucking tell me they've got monkeys roaming around as well, have they? Is that? Well, well what? <laughs> you, prob you have got monkeys roaming around. Yeah. Not either. I mean, Lydon is lovely, isn't it? And um, I, had, I had the misfortune last weekend because I, I bought something on eBay. I had to go and pick it up. And uh, I had to go to Cinderford. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. That was, uh, I hadn't been to Cinderford for, for ages, and um, that was an experience. And I, yeah, it was. And I, 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 I got lost, and uh, I stopped to ask somebody the way. And it was a Romanian, because there's a few of them in Cinderford now, isn't there, apparently? Um, and what was particularly nice uh, was the fact that he spoke Romanian, pidgin English, but with a forest accent. I thought, oh, it was brilliant. You just, it was the most bizarre thing. You'd have, yeah, but I think, you know, to be fair to the Romanians, they've brought um, sort of their diversity and their culture to Cinderford, because I wandered up the high street and I've never been offered so many drugs. Um, I've got to be honest, I did that joke in Mitchell Dean last week, that went down far better than that, so <laughs> you're going to have to up your game with that. Um, but I, I am from Gloucester and um, I'm very proud of the fact I'm from Gloucester because, you know, we, we, we're doing all right. We're doing okay. Yeah. We're on the up. Yeah, I can drive around Bristol. I didn't mention Bristol, but <laughs> but thank. So just saying. just saying, you're just saying completely out of context. <laughs> what what does that mean? You can. I know you're just saying, but we weren't talking about. Have you got an obsession with Bristol? Why do you go to Bristol? Well, yeah. Right, okay. This is this has turned weird very, very quickly. I've got to just well I know you're just saying, and that's lovely. Right, change the subject. No, I haven't finished with this yet, to be honest. <laughs> We're literally five minutes in and I'm getting grief already, which is brilliant. But we Gloucester, I mean we are on the up, on the up look, you know, the cathedral's been used as a fantastic film set for Harry Potter, um, the docks has been used as a film set, but we we can't compete with the Forest of Dean, can we? Puzzle wood being used for Star Wars. I mean, what a what a coup that was for you. That, I mean, that is just fantastic. And I don't know if you know, but um, when they, they wanted to recreate that famous scene in Star Wars where our heroes wander into that bar and it's full of, like, two-headed people and people with eight fingers. And they said, how are we going to do that in the forest? <laughs> and somebody said, just go to the Feathers in Colford any Saturday night and... Um, You'll be there. Um, and we mentioned wild boar earlier on, and a couple of years ago there was a report in the paper 
about a man from Cinderford being accused of having sex with a wild boar whilst under the influence of alcohol. And that got me thinking, just how much alcohol would a wild boar need <laughs> to have sex with a man from Cinderford? And beavers were reintroduced into the forest a little while back. Did we know this? Yeah, yeah? fantastic. Down at Lower Lidbrook, stop the flooding. And somebody pointed out, you do realise they're very voracious creatures, don't you? Yeah. Well, are you going to stop them getting out and spreading? And somebody from the Forestry Commission at Lidbrook just said, oh, that's easy, we're just going to build wooden fences. <laughs> now, again, that joke normally goes down <laughs> far better, but you're, you're just going to be a, a, a challenge, I think. You will warm up as we go on. But the one thing about doing sort of stand-up and travelling around is... Um, sorry to interrupt your conversation, ladies, you, but you just carry on. Sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, no, she's not sorry at all. Our Bristol expert. Um, you're not sorry? No. Good. That's fine. OK. This isn't a competition. It's not a battle. I mean, it can be, but it isn't, is it? Because this is lovely so far. But I just get the feeling it is, could, there's people over there thinking, oh, shit, which way is this going to go? <laughs> but travelling around doing stand-up, and you mentioned I'm from Gloucester, and you normally get the stuff shouted out, oh, Fred West, or like, if you ask, you know, what, what's Gloucester famous for? You get the rugby, you get the cathedral, you get the Fred West, and some people even say the cheese rolling. And um, are we all aware of the cheese rolling? Fantastic. I've never done it. Like, 64 years I've lived in Gloucester, I've never done the cheese rolling. But I am going to do it next year, and I have been practising. Um, so I've been rolling a baby bell down my drive. Uh, that's going well. <laughs> and a couple of years ago, when they reintroduced the cheese roll, BBC Southwest were there to, to film the event, because it had been sort of sidelined for quite some time. And one of the winners of one of the races was a 15-year-old girl from Brockworth called Kylie. And they interviewed afterwards, and they said, Kylie, you've entered the race, you've put your heart into it, you've chased that cheese down the hill, you've won, what would you like to say? And I thought, oh, Kylie, this is your chance in front of, like, three, four million viewers. Just say something profound, say something wonderful, you know? And what I wanted to come out of Kylie's mouth at that time was, well, like, look at me, I'm 15, I got four kids by six different dads already. I got kicked out of school at 13. Everyone's written me off. My teachers have written me off. My parents have written me off. My friends have written me off. And I thought, do you know what, Kylie? This is your time to shine. This is your time to prove to everybody that you are worth something. And I trained and trained. And I got to the top of that hill. And I looked down. And they set the cheese. And I was just, like, completely focused. And I chased that cheese as far as I could. And I caught it. And I won. That's what I wanted her to say, right? What she actually said was to the question, what would you like to say? She said, well, I was very surprised. And then they said, why were you surprised? And what came out of Kylie's mouth was simply, I don't even like cheese. <laughs> yeah. That's Gloucester for you, isn't it? Um, so I think we are probably ready for your first act of the evening. Is that all right? So his name is Sean Percival. He's a good mate of mine. I've gigged with him loads of times. Um, I think you're going to find him entertaining. I'm, I'm not sure about you, but <laughs> I'll leave that up to Sean. Um, so I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll tell you what we'll do. If we can start the applause, maybe at the back of the room with the, with the table at the back and then with the, with the football referee from Libya, which is fantastic. And then just start the applause there. Bring it all the way through the room as we welcome... Yeah, you start clapping now. That's it, brilliant. Bring it all the way through the room as we welcome the very lovely Sean Percival.